Shazam! Hey everybody, welcome back to Undeveloped, and here are another movie reaction for you guys. We just did some like a hot like about a week or two ago, and now we're covering another Marilyn Monroe movie, the movie that broke her out as a big star, Gentlemen Before Blondes, the 1953 comedy. At least yeah. I think it's comedy. I was recommended this movie by a friend from work. Nice. I'm assuming he had yep. good things to say about it. Yep, he is a huge movie buff. Mm-hmm. I call him a movie aficionado. I, I I always forget words to things and names of things. But he's really, he's a movie buff. <laughs> but I said we were kind of obsessed with her. She is, she is different. Yeah. She's different in a good way, and that's going to be kind of how Sydney Sweeney is. Like, she's getting, a lot of people starting to get obsessed with her. Mm-hmm. Like, she kind of had that same effect. And then she died young, which added a lot of fucking... Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Dying Hoopla, young Hoopla. always, like... It yeah, always brings something. Yeah. Dying young made Very her legend. Very same thing. Yeah. It was a square ghost, like a box for a ring. I think he's got a present for me. You know, I think you're the only girl in the world that can stand on a stage with a spotlight in her eye and still see a diamond inside a man's pocket. Yeah, she's not the greatest person in the world. <laughs> no. Kind of a gold digger. Definitely. Good evening, Mr. Esmond. Won't you pray? Come in. Thank you, I'd love to. And this is her turn off because Maybe now I just feel everything feels transactional. Mm -hmm. Simply you know I mean? wonderful. Yeah. So it takes all the passion out of it for me. You were good too. Eyeball around it. I mean, does it fit your finger? Oh, yes, it fits perfect. Daddy, I bet you made me the happiest girl in the world. I don't know what you do, honey. Oh, look at this. The only way a guy like that can get a woman that looks like that. Yeah. Like it's she's having money. <laughs> it's very obvious that she's using him in this movie. <laughs> but he's kind of too. He wants a hot chick on his arm. Mm -hmm. What in common do they have? A lipstick. Daddy. Daddy. Huh? May I tell Dorothy? If you wish. Dorothy. Hmm? Mr. Esmond and I are going to be married. To each other? <laughs> of course to each other. Who else to? Well, I don't know about you, Gus. I always sort of figured Lorelai would end up with the Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> Kathy, guess what? On Saturday, we're sailing on the Isle de Paris. Isle de Paris. We're going to be married in Europe. Well, why not get married in America and then go to Europe? Well, like she doesn't right. give a shit about this guy. These kids about getting married in extravagant yeah, ways. She just wants the nice things and everything. Exactly. Why would you want that? Honestly, why would you want that? <laughs> is he just that oblivious? He doesn't see it. It's and so yeah, obvious. I'm pausing, but hey, this is a reaction plus commentary. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get to the movie. Trust me. You're probably gonna cut this down a little bit. Obviously. Just as easy to fall in love with a rich man as a poor man. But yeah. she says yes, but if they're tall, dark, and handsome. She never gets around to vital statistics until it's too late. Well, That's why I'm her best friend, I guess. She really needs somebody like I to educate her. Yes, dear. But very she has few no girls respect when she's just telling you that. Wow. She's basically learn. telling you that she's doing I the same thing. I that's true. Yeah. I, I want you to put this in a safe place. What is it? A letter You know what? But it is, I think deep down he's insecure. He doesn't think he actually could get a woman like that. So it's like, Maybe. he he's just lucky. Maybe. I thought he was really into being degraded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's real sweet. You started writing me even before I went away. No, no, dear. You see, a letter of credit you know is like money. Put this in a safe place. What is it? A letter of credit. Oh, that's real sweet. You started writing me even before I went away. No. I bought you a little going away present, dear. Daddy. Daddy. Sometimes I think there's only one of you in the whole wide world. Oh, uh, sorry. Wrong room. Who is that? A stranger. He had the wrong room. You know, yeah, but he's I wonder if Marilyn even knows. Uh, uh, the Marilyn's character even knows his well, name because she only ever calls him Daddy. Wrong room. Let's call him Danny. I'll be in my 
She's doing a good job with the being seductive and sweet at the same time. Mm hmm. Mr. Amos Jones and Valet. What are you doing? I'm checking the passenger list. Mr. Alfred Lohman and Valet. Mr. Eugene Martin and Valet. Why the sudden interest in Valets? When a man has and Valet after his name, he's definitely worthwhile. I'm simply trying to find a suitable gentleman escort for you. Well, don't bother. I've just provided myself with about 20. <laughs> Dorothy, did you ever hear of a rich pole vaulter? Maybe not, but who cares? I like a man who can run faster than I can. I hate to think where you'll wind up. You're wasting all your time on unrefined persons without any money. Honey, did it ever occur to you that some people just don't care about money? Please, don't be silly. We're talking serious. <laughs> you don't want to end up with a loveless marriage, do you? Me? Loveless? <laughs> That's right. Because of a girl spending all of her time worrying about the money she doesn't have, how is she going to have any time for being in love? I want you to find happiness and stop having fun. <laughs> that baffles me. That's the most back. That's the most ass backwards thing I've ever heard in my life. That's ridiculous. I'm not even gonna go on a tangent about that. Can we, Monsieur? That's a fairly tidy sum just to get a seat at a table. That's the law of supply and demand this year. Already, I got many requests for a seat at Miss Lee and Miss Show's table, and the price goes up and up and up. That's inevitable. Je regret this year. Mm-hmm. Well, je regret it more than vous. However. The name's Malone. Better get it down there while I can still afford it. Merci, Monsieur Malone. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. Are you the head waiter? At your service, Mademoiselle. I'm Miss Lee. Oh, Miss Lee. Well, now I understand. What can I do for you, Miss Lee? Put a certain gentleman at my table. Oh, I'm humiliated, Mademoiselle. There is nothing I can do for you. All seating arrangements are completed, final, finished. Complete? That's too bad. Once I was in Atlantic City, and all the gentlemen in the hotel wanted to sit at my table. Oh, well, I can understand that. <laughs> Some of them even went to the head waiter to give him money. That happens. What can one do? One takes it. Why not? That head waiter had to give it back. Indeed? Why? Because I had all my meals in my room. I mean, I didn't even come to the table at all. So, naturally, the men wanted their money back. Oh, Mademoiselle, I beg you. Do you want me to have all my meals in my room? <laughs> Must not be, Mademoiselle. Of course. If Mr. Henry Spofford III is seated at my table... Oh, it shall be. <laughs> a nibble of fucking... Wow. Yep. She's, she's the worst. Thanks. Say, is that on the level? Do you own a diamond mine? Oh, I'm happy to say I do, my dear. Are you interested in diamonds? No, no, not particularly, but... Um... Really, really, you must be a very uh, extraordinary girl. Will you do me a favor, sir? Uh... Uh, Piggy, just call me Piggy. Would you do me a favor, Piggy? Anything, my dear, name. <laughs> Would you be careful not to spread it around about your diamond mine? I wouldn't want my girlfriend to hear about that. Oh, she doesn't care for diamonds either, huh? Believe me, Piggy, I'm only trying to save everybody trouble. Do not tell her about the diamonds. And she's right there, Did of you course. Did diamond? Well, well. Well, by George, I must say. No doubt about it. No sorry, by George, no doubt about it at all. Miss Lee, meet Piggy. Delighted, delighted. <laughs> you did say diamonds, I can tell. Yes, my dear. You see, my firm controls the second largest diamond diggings in South Africa. 
but it seems that we mustn't say anything about it. This young lady has a friend. She doesn't want to know about me. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Pardon my saying so, but having heard so much about you and all, I expected you'd be much older. Me? Oh, my, you don't say. Well, by George. Not always the goal, but older she's, than what? she's also the not loyal. Nope. Of course, I always not, say, if a man is a certain age, he just isn't interesting. No, money is rather a hobby of Lorelai's. <laughs> Oh, She's a true slut. You're yeah. worried her. about her, aren't you? Just slut because yeah, sure. she had more bodies, but she, but she, she, she fuck the highest bidder. Mm-hmm. Basically. Think. First, we do offer her the most. Considering the man shortage on this craft. Good. We'll start all over again, and I promise that I. I'm gonna be interrupted. We just had a jolly time. What? Oh, Mr. Malone, Miss Lee, and. Piggy, there I go again. Uh, Sir Francis Big. How do you do? How do you do? Hi. Oh, Dorothy, Piggy's a super best dancer. So light on his feet, you never believe it. I was sure he would be. Oh, now, see, are you just trying to flatter me then? What's the matter? Oh, Lady Big went my wife. <laughs> I thought it was his diamond mine. There you are, my dear. Won't you come and join us? I just have. Quite so, my dear. Oh, may I present Miss Lee? How Miss do you Shaw? Do? Hi. Mr. Malone, how do you do? How do you do? A pleasure, I'm never so sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so back Come sit off. down, my dear. We're having a jolly time. Till great. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah. Good <laughs> <laughs> table, madam. Good evening. Miss Lee and Miss Shaw. This is Mr. Crosley, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Mason. How do you do? And Mr. Brooks. How do you do? How do you do? Isn't Mr. Henry Spoff the third here? Not yet, but I believe this is his chair. You're here, Miss Lee. Uh, Miss Shaw, you're over here. Thank you. Pardon me, my girlfriend's too shy to ask, but could she please have your seat? But of course. She gets sick if she rides backwards. Jesus. <laughs> Not at all. it happen that we're at the same table? This is the seat they assigned me, lady. How much did it cost you? I can't tell you. You get too conceited. You're Mr. Franklin, aren't you? Are you enjoying your trip? Oh. How many times have you crossed? This is my... Uh, Don't you feel alone out on a big ocean? Well, I... Uh... I just adore conversation. Don't you? Oh, sir. <laughs> she doesn't adore conversation. She just adores talking. <laughs> yeah. Dorothy. The kid in the candy store. Though. Oh, yeah. She's a filmmaker, filmmaker of being in. Mr. Henry Spafford. Ah! Hello. Hello. That's how I've been to you just read names, lady. Hello. Well, Mr. Spafford, are you traveling by yourself? No, I've got a valet, a tutor, and a trainer. Well, uh, pardon my saying so and all, but having heard so much about you, I expected you to be much older. I'm old enough to appreciate a good looking girl when I see one. Hey yo. He promises to be quite a trip. Say hey yo again. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I see. Just what did you mean by that remark? Well, let's say I just can't figure out how two girls can be so different and be such good friends. Now listen, Malone, let's get this straight. Nobody talks about Lorelei but me. She's quite a girl, you just don't know her. He's got a point, though. I <laughs> like you better, do you? Well, we settled that quarrel in a hurry. Now what do we talk about? Let's talk about you. Well, for the past hour, I've been thinking. Thinking about doing something. Well, what have you been thinking, Mr. Malone? That's, that's a, a bad, bad look, no matter how you look. That's, that's a, a real, real bad, bad look, look, dude. Wow. 
Like, I get that you're probably some private vest gear or something, but still, yeah. that's I really skeevy. I call it three months I mean, you backstory, all the inconsistencies, that's the only thing that kind of makes sense. Come to my bashar, a PI and I'll give you my posing as a rich dude. Shells. Now, you see, the natives believe the coconut shells ward off the snakes. Clever what? Huh? Africa must be fascinating. Gee, Peggy, a girl like I almost never gets to meet really interesting men. <laughs> Sometimes my brain gets real starved. Poor How do insane. people fall for Terrible this shit? Terrible thing to be lonesome, especially in the middle of a crowd. You know what I mean? You'll never be you know lonesome again. Mean. Are you leaving you the know what I mean. Excuse me, Piggy. I've got to see Lorelei alone. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, shall I wait in the next room? If you like. Uh, We're expecting Lady Beekman for tea. Lady Beekman? Mm -hmm. Here? Yes. Oh, I just remember. I have another appointment. <laughs> i better pop off. Well, Tony Lou, Chin Chin, and all that rot, you know? Yeah, but halfway through. That, I know oh. we've been pausing a lot, but, like, I really oh. thought you watched more than the uh, half. Nope. <laughs> so you're gonna be like 30 minutes left at best. That was very mean of you. I would never enter. Now you shut up and sit down and listen to me because you're in a jam, honey. Me? Why? What were you and Piggy doing in here before he started barking like a seal? He wasn't barking. That's Swahili. No, no, before that. <laughs> now think hard. Was there anything that would look incriminating in a photograph? Something you wouldn't want Mr. Esmond to see? Why, no. <gasps> My goodness, yes. What? Piggy was telling me about South Africa. It's very dangerous there. Practically full of snakes called pythons. And it seems a python can grab a goat and kill it for just squeezing it to death. We'll get to the point. That's all. Well, what's incriminating about that? The motion? <laughs> well, Piggy was being the python and I was a goat. Oh, Lorelei. Don't worry. Hey, Piggy yo. won't tell anyone he was being the python. He won't have to. Because just about the time Piggy was squeezing the goat, Mr. Ernie Malone was taking pictures right through that porthole. Good evening, Mr. Malone. Good cocktails already. Good. Make yourself at home. Whew. So you girls know it's hot in here? It must be 110. Yes, it is a little warm, but uh, Lorelei's afraid of catching cold. Had a touch of laryngitis. Here you are, Mr. Malone. Specialty of the house. Thank you. Mm, that's quite a cocktail. It's very mild. Let's drink a toast. Do you know this one? There was an old fellow named Sidney who drank till he ruined a kidney. It shriveled and shrank, but he drank and he drank. He had his fun doing it, didn't he? It's appetizing. I know another one. Bottoms up. <laughs> he looks like he's going to explode. Oh, is he allergic to something in there? Maybe. What was that? Just equal parts of scotch, vodka, brandy, and gin. Oh. Here, try this. <laughs> that wasn't water. No, it was straight vodka. <clears throat> Do you want some more? No. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? I'm burning up. I know it. Let's take off your coat. What? Oh, yes, you feel a lot better. You'll what? cool off. What? Here, I'll help. Now, you just sit down there. Excuse me a minute. Luck? Not so far. Make sure you check the inside pocket. I don't think it's here. Oh, it must be. No, I think. I got it. I've got it. Here, to the love, 20. Your negatives and positive points. And may I say, in the mortal words of my countrymen, Oh, la, la. Thank you ever so. A oh, pleasure, Mademoiselle Lorelei. A bit of impudence I've ever encountered. The idea of photographing innocent people through a porthole. Why, it's absolute invasion of privacy. Just imagine some newspaper getting a hold of it. She shouldn't use his Lady picture to actually blackmail this dude. You were just being a snake. I think I'd better sit down a moment. Are you sure, my dear, there's no more of these things about? Positive, Piggy. Do you feel better? You little angel. You don't even know that there is a certain kind of girl that would take advantage of a thing like this. She'd have to be a pretty terrible girl to be mean to a sweet, intelligent, generous man like you, Piggy. My dear, my dear, you must let me do something for you to show my gratitude. Oh, thank you ever so. May I, uh, may I kiss your hand? 
I guess it makes sense. She doesn't really need the black metal to manipulate him. This is already easy in her hands. A diamond tiara? Yes, Lady Beekman's. I just love to have it. Good gracious. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. But wouldn't you rather have some furs or a, or a racehorse or a motorboat? No, thank you. Well, it would be very difficult for me to explain to Lady Beekman. Oh. Oh, he had some... He had some... Okay, so that's uh, glistening in on them. Oh. <laughs> you, Madame, are these the persons you were talking about? Yes, these are the persons. Well, Lady Piggy, I mean, Pigman, what a pleasant surprise. Mm, I dare say. You may proceed, Pritchard. This person is Miss Lee. Uh, Miss Lee, I represent the Suffolk and Greater London Insurance Company. Well, thank you ever so. I never buy insurance. Sell it to Mr. Malone. He needs it in the business he's in. <laughs> what is all this? Young woman, Being if sued. you return the tiara, I'm willing to forget this squalid incident. Well, uh, allow me to clarify, the lady. A lady Beekman's tiara, which is insured with my company, has been reported as stolen. What's oh. that got to do with us? Uh, we've been informed. It's in your possession. Is that true? Absolutely not. Honey, why don't you let Lorelei talk for herself? She'll do better than that. She'll sue you for slander, honey. Tell uh. them. <laughs> Go on. Well, we're waiting. Especially since she actually has None it. None of your business. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's very much our business. Honey, just tell them you haven't got it. Tell. Oh, <laughs> Lola, <laughs> you didn't. I did not. Why are you defending this low life? Why are you even friends with this person? Perhaps you'll explain how it happens to be in your possession. Suppose we say that's my affair. Well, that's one explanation. Faites entrer l'accusé. Faites entrer Mademoiselle Lee. Mademoiselle Lola Lee. <laughs> really? Really? Wow. You're doing this for her? For real? You're imp you're you're dressed up at fuck you, lady. Wow. You will please swear, Miss Lee. Oh, Judge, I never swear. You've been asked to swear to tell the truth. The old truth, nothing but the truth. Will you do that? Well, yeah. Thank you ever so. <laughs> Sit down, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle Lee, I've been requested to hold you for trial for a charge of grand larceny. The complainant attests that you have stolen, uh, how do you say, a headpiece of diamond? A tiara? My goodness, Judge, a girl needs a little time to think. You're so much more intelligent She's than poor little me. Won't you yeah. tell me what I ought to say? Please, to answer the charge. I'm not sure if that's her or if that's Marilyn Monroe dubbing over her. That's just how it's going to. That's just who I am, all right. But my friends call me Lorelei. I do hope you're my friend because I just love to have handsome gentlemen be my friend. Well, my eyes are not what they might be. Have you ever heard me sing? No. Are you sure? Oh, I've not had the pleasure. Why, thank you ever so. A kiss on the hand may be quite continental. I don't think musicals are admissible in the court of law. What the fuck will we go for ahead? But it won't pay the riddle on your humble flat or help you at the automat. Men grow cold as girls grow old. And we all lose our charms in the end. Yeah, this is fucking ridiculous. Tiffany's. Cartier's. Black Star. Stop the musical, expose her ass for the fraud she is. I resign. What? I just quit the case. You don't owe me a dime. What's got into you? Are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm, but I like it that way. Judge, <sighs> I've changed my mind. What? I haven't anything to say. Oh, this becomes more and more confusing. But the solution is simple. <sighs> my decision is this. 
The property in question will be placed in custody of this court until its rightful owner can be established by an affidavit from Lord Beckman himself. Now, Miss Lee, you will give me the tiara. But, Judge, I can't. If you refuse, I must put you in prison. Well, I don't refuse. Then I what he did makes no difference. Nope, no. not at all. I think I know where that thing is, and I think I know who's got it. Why? What, did he steal it? I'm a private detective, Your Honor. If you'll give me a couple of policemen and wait about half an hour, I can bring that tiara back and settle this thing. And the lawyer. Qui se découvre? Découvrez-vous. On ne pas chapeau. What you say? I'm trying so hard to contain all my hatred and anger right now. I feel like going an hour rant, but I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to get this over with. All these characters are just the worst. In just a second. Your Honor, this is Sir Francis Beekman. And this, I believe... Is the missing tiara. That's private property. I'm sure Miss Lee will be glad to return it. I certainly would. But before that happens, I believe his honor asked Miss Lee to give him the tiara. I did. Oh, I say, that is... I wouldn't go into that if I were you, Mr. Finch. Finch. Miss Lee? Thank you. Your honor? <laughs> Thank you. Maître Gaudier. Thank you. Monsieur Pritchard. Thank you. Your lodger. Thank you. Chairs dismissed. Hello, father. Hello, son. Good. Help this bitch ass, pussy ass, Please bitch made ass nigga. The father is the best I know character in this movie. Poor father, and I don't care. I've made up my mind. I'm going to make her marry me. Oh, bless your heart. That's wonderful. <laughs> Mr. Roy, everything wrong with men, you fucking pussy. <laughs> I presume this is the young lady? Well, yes. Such a pretty little girl. Please, please, American? Yes, except on my father and mother's side, they're Irish. You know, you actually could tell how how the demeanor changed now that he's there. Yeah. Almost like, almost like she's exposed, <laughs> like a fucking, <laughs> fucking. She's on, she's on thin roach. ice, and she knows it. She knows she better watch her fucking mouth. <laughs> Spotlight shine on a roach. Yeah. Believe me, son, I'm delighted about this. I've wanted to see you married for a long time. <laughs> Anybody but that monster, Lorelai Lee. What? Oh, he doesn't know that's Lorelai! Yes, <laughs> I am Lorelai Lee. <laughs> Pretty early in the game to start teasing your father-in-law. What's the matter with you, father? Nothing. <laughs> I can take a joke. What joke? Th this is Lorelai. Father, this is not the sort of thing one would joke about. I don't have my driver's license with me. <laughs> He's confused because he thought the other bitch was Lorelai. <laughs> what? Honest. Look. That's I. See my name? Well, I'm too old for this sort of thing. <laughs> Father, I don't understand. You don't understand? How do you think I feel with thousands of Laurel Lees coming at me from everywhere? But believe me, son, you're not going to marry any one of them. Father, Good. I love her. I love her very much. Fuck you. I've never had a feeling oh, like shut this. up. Yes. Young lady, you don't fool me one bit. I'm not trying to. <laughs> but I bet I could, though. No, you might convince this jackass that you love him, but you'll never convince me. <laughs> Perfect word for him. Perfect word. Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad, because I do love him. Certainly. For his money. No, honestly. Yeah, Have you right. got the nerve to stand there and expect me to believe that you don't want to marry my son for his money? It's true. Then what do you want to marry him for? I want to marry him for your money. Fair. Look at his face, says it all. Oh, Lorelei. Don't you see? That's why we have to have his consent, silly. Well, at least we're getting down to brass tacks. You admit that all you're after is money. No, I don't. You're right. Aren't you funny? Don't you know that a man... She's trying to pull, she's trying to pull some... She's trying to pull some real slick bullshit right now. Really you better is. dead that one like time. like a girl being pretty. You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty. But my goodness, doesn't it help? <laughs> and if you had a daughter, wouldn't you rather she didn't marry a poor man? But I was... You'd want her to have the most wonderful things in the world and to be very happy. Oh, why is it wrong for me to want those things? Well, I concede that... Say, they told me you were stupid. You don't sound stupid to me. I can be no, smart. No, she's a master manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> That's her whole character. She manipulates the shit out of people. Important. But most men don't like it. Except Gus. 
He's always been She's outright telling you, hey, your son's a sucker. <laughs> and I like that about him. I like that I can just geese him. <laughs> On your wedding day, it's all right to say yes. I guess a double marriage. Okay. We're just two little girls from Little Rock. And we lived on the wrong side of the tracks. This, this, how I feel. this is my face, my natural how I feel <laughs> watching this. Look at it. Yeah. <laughs> this is... I'm not even forcing my face. This is coming like this. Yeah. I'm disgusted. It's good. Them two, I guess. But you, you fucking sucker. Hey, your father falls are coming in and hell business. You got sucker too. I'm beautiful. I'm gonna get hot and turn Minta into mulch. But yeah, Dinner for Blondes, I'm not really sure what to think about it. I mean, yeah, at first, at first, at first, at first, yeah, at first I'm just disliking, but I'm starting to get it in a way. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to, and the fact that I'm getting this impassioned about it means that it's doing something right, I guess. Yeah, because you wonder if, if the movie was just boring and awful. Definitely Be not. Because in a way, you, you see exactly how she got to this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? So she won the game fair and square in her fucked up way. I feel like this is the kind of movie that it's going to need to sit on me for a bit because, like, this isn't as immediately enjoyable or lovable as the last 250 movies we saw. No. Because uh, Singing in the Rain and Smoke on My Cow were both just wild, way fun better. times. Yeah, way more fun of a time. But, like, watching this, like, it's like, I don't know, it's weird because it, it well, parts of it's trying to be like those films, well, but parts of it kind of isn't. Before I tell Paul um, how I feel about this, I'm actually going to ask him what he likes about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to ask because, like, I'm thinking about these. Maybe kids. Game pers perspective, because I I hate, hate to I hate to, I hate to say I hate this movie. And he looks at me funny, like, no, but you're missing this and this and this and this and this. I'm like, oh okay. Mm -hmm. So because like the way the movie presents these characters, I'm like, I'm not entirely sure I'm supposed to like them. But one thing I know I hate mm -hmm. is, is 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 the one on the left, the black haired character, yeah. because she knows damn what her game is. And you seem to have these huge disagreements. And I think that would have fucking festered and blow up, blow up by the end of the movie. But no, she just keeps defending her. Yeah. And going to lengths to defend her. Why? Like, the thing is, their friendship doesn't even really come across. I don't think their friendship comes off too well on screen. It doesn't come off genuine at all. It comes like no. you don't even like each other. That you pretty much stand against everything she believes in. Yeah. So why fight so hard to protect her and perpetuate really her for fucked up doings? Yeah. And let her be a hypocrite. I really don't get why they're friends. I don't. And I don't really don't get why she defends her. That's the oh. problem here. Like, the thing is... Honestly, I think this movie would be a lot better if either a like uh, fucking Marilyn Monroe's character was like blackmailing her, or maybe she was in love with Marilyn Monroe's character. One or the other, Something it would be it would help it make more sense. Time, I get what she does. What she does. I don't get why she does what she does. Yeah, because she's just kind of all over the place. Jane Russell's character is very over the place. I, I don't get this her. guy like in a second is like what? Yeah, like that relationship was fast, but again, her that's kind of a better. But her character is most is more stupid. Yeah. Her, I understand. I, I, I guess she, her motives are clear, yes. and I understand what exactly she's. She's meticulous. She's, meticulous. she's very on brand about everything. And, exactly, and she's and she's a manipulator. That's her brand. Yes, she get what to get her diamonds. She's one of the most manipulative characters on screen. <laughs> yes, and if you're, you're dumb enough to fall for it, then you're an idiot. Yeah, and it kind of portrays all these like all these rich people as idiots. It's very much an anti-rich movie. That's what I'm trying to say. All these rich white men are nothing more horny idiots. Yes, they are. All of them are in this movie. Even the even, even the one ones. that we thought was gonna be the one to finally put into our fucking no. <laughs> fucking tyranny. Mm hmm. Yeah, here is a movie where the villain won. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is a movie where the villain won. Yeah, like I, I mean, honestly, but. But I see that the person who made this has like a, a a fetish, a hate fetish against like rich white men. Yeah. Or just rich men in prison. Honestly, place. parts of this movie remind me a lot oh, of... Oh, men. Not straight up. I know. The thing is, parts of this movie, like, 
aside from the musical numbers, apart the rest of the movie kind of reminds me of Saltburn in a way, because it does have the same kind of idea where you're manipulating people to get what you want. Yeah. But here it's done like I know I feel like it's done with more like tact in that movie. You've seen Talented Mr. Ripley, right? No, I haven't. Yeah, by the way, yeah. Uh, you told me it was very similar to Saltburn in that respect, yeah. Could just about it again, and I saw some clips again. After, after, yeah, but it's like yeah, it's a lot like. So it's a lot like Mr. Ripley. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot like Mr. Like Jude Law actually plays the Jacob Elordi character pretty much. Uh, <laughs> a rich, or a, a rich hair who goes on vacation, enjoys himself, and fucking Ripley comes along and sne- and fucking fits his way, manipulates, and frauds his way into that. So and he's a comment mentally, yeah. basically, and he frauds his way into his circle mm-hmm. while he's paying, doing all these types of shit for him. But the thing is, he really comes from being poor, and he yeah. and he just wants to live a good life. Mm-hmm. The difference is that that what's his face. Doesn't come. He just wants to fit in and, and have what he has, mm-hmm. just cause. That shit for 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 Matt Damon's character, for, for me and Ripley, he comes pretty much from Boston. He's, he's a nobody, so he's like you know what I mean like mm-hmm. he wants he he look he looks at Jules Lockhart. I can live his life. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's the slight difference, but it's damn near the same movie. Mm-hmm. So if you watch that movie, you may like Saltburn less, mm-hmm. because like okay, this movie just kind of ripping this movie off. Maybe. That's how you'll feel. But having seen Saltburn with my frame of reference, I do like the themes a lot in Saltburn. And I'm like, because like the thing is, while these are the same on paper, like this and Jim Four Blondes are like the same kind of idea on paper. I feel like that. I feel like Saltburn kind of conveys its themes better. It's very much about how money makes people fucking uh, uh, make people complacent, and complacency just leads to stagnation, and stagnation leads to just, like some bigger predator coming over and taking all of your shit. But here it's like I don't, I'm not, it doesn't really have anything to say about like money or even no to show that we're fucking idiots <laughs> and we sucker for pretty for pretty women. I mean, I mean, get manipulated. We all just manipulated and basically like fucking guck under her boot. Yeah, because like I'm trying to think of something deeper than that, but I'm just struggling to find it. Maybe but maybe there there. is. <laughs> it really doesn't feel like there is anything there. I feel like I think it's a fifties movie. There's no way they're thinking that deep into it. You know yeah, I mean? they usually don't back then. Like oh, very few did back then. So I'm- their idea is that hey, we're gonna have the villain win. Most men, I probably hate men. Most men are idiots and mulch and they horny idiots, mm-hmm. and they they can and they can fall under pretty women's spell and they rule the world. Yeah. That's pretty much what I'm getting here. If there's something that is deeper going on, maybe I'll read into it, but it is eluding me. Same here. I'm I'm hoping there's something more to it, but I'm not it's not looking good so far, to be honest. Like overall, I think the movie's alright. I mean the fact that it made listen genuine genuine emotions for me means that it's something right, as I said. Yeah, so I, I do it's think definitely not a bad movie. No, I do think that like the last third actually have a lot of I think that's a yeah, generally just, good yeah, part of the movie. Yeah, last thirty minutes actually was like a did a lot, but even at the beginning it was like eh. Yeah, like the first hour was just kind of okay. Yeah, like the musical numbers were fine. Like the characters were, I mean, the characters were despicable, but they weren't like super poorly written. Aside from Jane Russell's character, I'm really again, yeah. she's just very scattershot. As I'm really thinking about it, yeah, her character is really out of, out, out there. She's whatever mm-hmm. the plot needs her to exactly. be. Exactly, that's who she is. And I hate characters like that the most in terms of a narrative standpoint because it makes no fucking sense. Exactly, same here. Is that is exactly what the plot needs to be? Lucifer is like that with the entire show. They, <laughs> so all these characters, yes. anything the plot needs them to be. Yep. Say there were plot lines. We're gonna change things just because we need we need it to happen, mm. so we can go to these stories. And that's the <laughs> pinnacle of lazy writing. That's hackdom. It that's is. that's being a hack. Yeah. By the way, I call Michael Bay a hack to um Paul. He, was, he looked at me like I was crazy. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> and he sent me two videos. One is called Bay a True or Tour. And another one is called What is Bayham? And I watched those videos and it did and I don't know what he thought was gonna happen, but it did not prove his point at all. It has proved it has analyzed how much of a hack he really is. And the things and and all his and it all, 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 all and all his fucking um his quirks and things he does in his movies, but how he goes over the top, or whatever else. Everything he chooses is deliberate and it's his own style, his own brand. And I guess that's what makes him an auteur. But I'm like, because you're an auteur doesn't mean you're a good director. No. <laughs> Like you can be an auteur and still be bad. Yeah, like I don't know. A lot of auteurs are good. Some movies he made out those enjoyable, but even those are subpar. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the fact that the best movies are subpar doesn't mean that make you a good filmmaker. Exactly. Like even good Transformers Oh Seven is one of his best, and Bad Boys, and those films are like okay. Yeah. You know, Bad Boys is a classic. I mean, it's stunt. It's you know, I mean, it's it's pretty popcorny. It's it's a cool movie. 
yeah. I never seen a rock. I heard, I heard a good thing about the rock, but like, true. Those like decent movies. Those like, you know, I mean, those like that's the best you can do. That you, and it just goes downhill. That means you're not that good of a filmmaker. You know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Cause even Ridley Scott has flops, and he's but he's made some classics. Yeah, yeah. It's like Ridley Scott is like you never know where you're getting with him. Yeah. He's like a <laughs> he's like a boxer. He's checks like a great man. movie, or you're getting a man movie. You know? Yeah, his quality is all over the damn place, but hey. At least he actually has the good movies out there no, to prove that he's great. Tony Scott is, was his brother. Yeah. Who's Tony Scott? He's a director. He he directed uh, Enemy of State and uh, other movies. I've heard of Enemy of State. I never saw it, though. That's a Will Smith. If, let us know what your thoughts on this movie are down below. If you are a fan of this movie, which I'm sure at least some of you probably are, please let us know what Please let us know what exactly about the movie that you really like. Like, what really draws you to this movie? We're actually very curious to know. And with that being said, please make sure to hit the like, subscribe button. We'll see you next time for the next reaction. See you guys. Peace.